It's retro time. I got a Wonder Swan. Wait, no, not that. That one, yeah. Okay, so I did a video a while back on the uh, Wonder Swan color backlight kit. You can see how much I use these Jesus things. Um, I thought it was pretty neat, but realistically, I don't really do much with Wonder Swans. Uh, I, at the time, owned one game. Now I own two. Um, but it worked. It was pretty neat. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, there were also new shells at the time. I guess there are still technically new shells. They're just not as new as they were. <laughs> um, but I mean, aftermarket shells. Um, and like everything works, it, it's pretty neat. But this was for the Wonder Swan color. There's also the Wonder Swan crystal, which, to my knowledge, there aren't any kits for. Uh, start. We'll continue. Um, but we want to check out the original Wonder Swan here. Uh, so the original Wonder Swan. Let me go ahead and turn this off. There we go. The original Wonder Swan is a little bit unique in that, um, well, I guess it's not really unique. That's kind of a thing that happens. I'm gonna slide in the uh, color battery thing because this one has a little bit of corrosion in it and I just haven't quite gotten around to cleaning it all up. I'm sure it'll be fine, but whatever. Uh, these things don't work on uh, Wonder Swan color games, which is what this is. So, got an original Wonder Swan game, so we can finally check it out. And uh, let's see what we got. So, yeah, as you can see, the um, original screens on this is. Uh, the original screens on these things are um, not. Not great at all. To my knowledge, there is uh, not really much you can do about that. Um, I believe these things can be backlit same as original Game Boys. Uh, so you pull this thing out, pull the polarizer and the reflector off, and then you stick an LED panel behind there. And I think that'll illuminate the screen. We'll take a closer look when I have it apart. But in this particular case, we've got brand new IPS kit. Let's just try it out. Comes with a replacement glass screen lens, which this one's actually pretty clean. And I like the silver more than I like the white, but try it out anyway. And So we've got two wires for soldering. I will have to pull up the instructions because I didn't study in advance. A ribbon cable to connect this up and some double-sided adhesive. So not much to it. The screen itself is already joined to this thing. I have no idea how. I guess it's just soldered down. I don't know. There's uh, there's nothing down there. Of course, the um, chip they're using to do the conversion is unlabeled, which makes me think, oh, hey, this is another one chip kit, and I bet it is. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull up the instructions here so we can go ahead and get this installed on. You know, I almost winged it. And I probably could have gotten away with it. It's a lot less complicated than I thought it was. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing torn down. I've got an assortment of batteries we can try out. This thing takes a, uh, it's a proprietary driver or a proprietary screw, except that you could just use a Torx bit on it. Uh, I have no idea what size. I've had this tool stuck to my soldering thing since I did the video on the uh, Wonder Swan color. Because I guess that kit came with one of these, and I don't know, I didn't know what to do with this, so I kept it. 
Let's see what size it is though, hang on. So a Torx T6 will work. But a Torx T7 is a much better fit. Not that you should be putting enough torque on these things to strip them, but better fitting driver is always the better choice. this comes off with a snap. I haven't had one of the original Wonder Swans apart, but I'm guessing it comes apart much like the color. Oh yeah, there's a little snap fit right there and there, or you can just hinge it off. Well, that's pretty simple. Just like Game Boys, they've got this separate DC-DC board, uh, except on the Game Boy, those are, well, Game Boy Color in this case, uh, they're soldered on with header pins, whereas this is board mount. That's pretty neat. Ooh, before we continue, I'm gonna shove my game in here. Felt like something was in there. Let's get some power usage numbers, huh? I know this thing is going to be a battery hog just by the fact that it comes with two wires that you need to solder straight to the battery. And I know that Wonder Swans are known for their exceptional battery life. Is that the right one? Nope. We don't need the dongle for this one. And it is set to 3.4. I know the Wonder Swan can take it, but that's not. Oh, I don't actually have a quick set for Wonder Swan. That's unfortunate. Uh, modify. I'm going to set it to 1.2 volts, the nominal voltage of a single AA nickel metal hydride, and uh, we'll see what that does. Power goes here, ground goes here, turn that on. And it boots up just fine, as expected. I'm not going to touch the sound, just going to leave it where it is. I think it's already at the max anyway. Oh, well now it is. Alright, so on the main menu, at 1.2 volts, this thing is pulling, uh, what is that, 75 to 77 milliamps, which is all of nothing. Uh, this is half what a Game Boy pulls. Probably even less, um, close to a third. So out of a single double A, what you probably get like 20 hours out of this thing stock, at least. That's pretty neat. But let's try out the backlight kit. I bet we get much worse battery afterwards. And what is holding this thing in? Because I don't see any screws from here. Oh, it's just sticky. I'll pop that out. Pop that up. And then it just comes out. Yeah, it's just sticky. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if it's 
stuck down, these little pads didn't feel adhesive. I think this thing just saw water at some point. But easy peasy. Screen comes out pretty similarly to how Game Boy does. I'll just go ahead and give that a little twist. And we can pull it out. The instructions say, ooh. Maybe be careful when you twist. I think I broke that. I can't remember if the polarizer always looked like that in the top corner. But uh, it looks like this thing is pretty easy to backlight though. You just peel that off and then drop an LED panel in there. I am going to try reusing the original tape because it's pretty much intact. So this thing gets plugged in this side with the blue side up, so pins down. And oh, we should do the soldering first, how about? Got two wires. One that goes into ground here, just as soon as my iron's hot. Ah, I think we need to bump the heat up for that. There's a ground. Ah, that's better. I don't think it matters, but I'm using the bottom ones, same as the instructions. And by bottom ones, I mean the uh, terminals closest to the edge of the board. Just like that one on power, one on ground. Oh, and I hate that they've done this. Because this board is on the screen, you have to be real careful soldering this up. Ah. Oh. Okay, well, I am going to try my best to insulate that just a little bit. Just the corner. Solder ground to ground, bat to bat. Got to do a little bit of a crossover. And I've already totally forgotten how this gets plugged in. Does that go? Yeah. Goes contacts up. So I'll have to do some like origami on this, but we'll try that out in just a minute. Because for now, I'm just going to plug this in. Oh, but I'm going to have to origami that just so the cart clears so we can test it out. Ugh. Well, that's okay. I think it'll be fine. Alright. We're almost done. Believe it or not. Easy peasy. Ooh, and I left that on. I wasn't supposed to leave that on. But I did. 
around here. Power there. I'm just going to hold that up to uh, make sure it's nice and insulated. And we have to drop a cart in because Wonder Swans don't generally work without one. And hey, what do you know? It just works. Thanks, Todd. And in that same main menu, with the same volume, on the same game, and on the same Wonder Swan, at 1.2 volts, it is pulling. What is that, 234? 230? To 294 milliamps. Uh, so average, we'll just call that 250. Uh, so from 78 to 250 milliamps, that is, uh, that's a lot. That's going to be, what, like three times power usage? Which means if you were getting 20 hours out of a single battery, you're now going to get seven. Not great. Um, napkin math. Efficiency, of course, is going to be different depending on um, which type of battery you're using, like nickel metal hydride versus uh, alkaline versus like one of these constant voltage lithium batteries. I don't know which way the Wonder Swan swings, but I'm guessing higher voltage is generally more efficient because a lot of other consoles are that way. Let's see what this touch sensor does. Ooh, this does color palettes, which is nice because this is not a color console. This thing just does black and white. Uh, and then there was actually another touch sensor, but there's nothing wired up to it. Let's see if it does anything. No, oh, I'm just triggering the color palette one. Oh, it looks like this one does color palettes too? That's odd. I guess there's no brightness control. It's weird. Uh, I don't see wires for that either. Oh, does it use the contrast? Oh, it does use the contrast wheel. Ah, clever, clever, clever. So at low brightness, this thing is pulling 234, same low, to 255 milliamps, 275 milliamps. At max brightness, it is pulling 314 to 336 milliamps. So there is a bit of a difference. I like that they use the contrast wheel, that's, that's nice. Let's finish the install, I guess. So we're going to pop this lens out. I shouldn't just put my fingers against the back of it because now it's never going to be clean, but knowing me, I was never going to clean it anyway. Need to do a little bit of cleanup before I can install this new lens. Unfortunately, there are small chunks of adhesive remaining, and I want the new lens to sit nice and flat. Uh, but that's what the IPA is for. Quick tangent while I'm doing this. Uh, don't ever use any liquid cleaners on any LCD with an internal backlight, ever. Never, never, never. You can use liquid and apply it to a cloth or maybe even a cotton swab, but you never apply the liquid directly to the screen because if this, the liquid soaks in, it's going to impregnate all of the diffusers that the backlight uses and um, it's gonna ruin your screen. 
it will never evaporate. Even if your screen still works, you're always going to have these weird, like, blotchy artifacts all over the backlight, and it's just not going to look good. And you're going to hate yourself, and for a kit like this, that means you're out the kit. For a lot of other kits, and, and Game Boy stuff in particular, you can usually get the screen separately, but I don't imagine the volumes on this kit are high enough that it's worthwhile to even stock separate screens. Um, and even if it were, this screen and the board it's connected to are married, so with this kit you're SOL if that happens, unfortunately. And of course I have a video on that too. Two, actually. One just for cleaning and the other I straight demoed what happens. Ruined a screen in that video. Oh no. Need a little bit more. And I said you can apply liquid straight to a cotton swab, but you only gotta get it like damp, not sopping wet. If it's sopping wet, that's too much. At least for a screen. I like to save these. It's a good bit of double-sided adhesive. And if nothing else, the lens fits really nicely. All right, so the instructions state that we want to get these buttons back in there before I lose them. Uh, the instructions state that we want to remove the old tape and replace it with, <clears throat> with the new tape that it comes with. But I'm going to try and get away with using the original tape because it came out pretty damn clean. Um, I don't expect that everyone's going to have that experience, but... If you get as lucky as I did, you know, go for it, I guess. Uh, let's flip that over. And, ooh, how does this need to be positioned? Let's find out. Okay, so this is totally awkward. I wish I hadn't peeled that off yet. I'm going to unplug this. Flip that back, and then this we want to align with the bottom left corner, and then just stick it down. And we have one touch sensor that I do want access to. Fold that around that plastic thing plastic support because I don't know what kind of clearance we have. And I'm going to stick it right on the front right there. Same thing here, I need to route this wire down and through the controls, and by through I just mean under. just want to put it under that membrane so there's plenty of slack, and as soon as I lift it up it pops right out. That's okay. it's worth like gluing it or taping it down? Probably not. I don't think it's that tight in here. 
It's also not transparent, so it's not like we're going to be able to see this uh, mess of wire routing that I'm doing right now. Just seats just like that. I'm going to go ahead and bend that like that just so it's nice and convenient to plug in. And we need a power switch, don't we? I think we can use that space. Find out in a second. What the heck? There we go. Yeah, be careful with your routing. Um, there's definitely a better way to do that, but I think I'm going to leave it for now. There are no aftermarket shells available for the Wonder Swan Classic. There are for the color, but no for the original and no for the crystal, unfortunately. So, if yours is in pretty bad condition, sorry about your bad luck. cross-threaded. Too late now. Always got to give screws quick back turn until you hear that click. Hear it? One more. And then you can go ahead and drive it in. That way the screw is going in the original threads and not making new threads, which you can only do so many times in plastic. Oops, I forgot to turn it off. But hey, it works. We've got brightness control, that's super cool. Oh, there's some scuffs on the inside of that. That's unfortunate. I should have paid better attention. Oh well. I don't think I've done a single install without getting dust or schmoo or something on the inside. Let's see what this game even does. I haven't played this game. And I don't know how far I'll get because it's not in English. I do like the color filters for this black and white stuff though. It is very much so appreciated. Uh, I love games with a story in a language I don't understand. I mean, it works fine. Yes. 
I don't know what I just said yes to, but I said yes. That was maximum brightness, by the way. It's not a very bright screen, but single double A. Don't think that can be helped. Oh, this looks like a name input. Thank goodness that worked. <laughs> That is a problem with a lot of Wonderswan games. Um, this is a Japanese domestic market console, which means pretty much all of the games are in Japanese. I don't know what I'm doing here. Pretty cool. I'll have to play with this game and, and see what's going on. Um, unfortunately, this is also the only game I have for this. Like I said, the uh, other game, which I understand even less, is a color-only game, and it does not work in the classic Wonderswan. As you can see by this error message that I don't comprehend, but since the buttons don't do anything, it's pretty easy to uh, pretty easy to guess what that is. Google Translate would also help, but it says Wonder Swan Color on the cart, so I don't think it's that ambiguous. Unlike Game Boys, the Wonder Swan carts are not keyed, so there's nothing preventing you from just plugging in an incompatible cart. But like Game Boys, the cart itself, the color, is a pretty good indication, and much like Game Boys, the black carts, they're actually smoke, kind of clearish are the classic Wonderswan and then the clear are color only and then there are a few other colors that um, totally throw out the whole color scheme because of course they do. But there are some that are both, much like Game Boy. But yeah, I don't know, pretty neat. Let us see if it works any better with a constant voltage battery. Not that there was a problem with it, but just to be sure. And we'll try our weak nickel metal hydride and make sure that works too. Oh, and for what it's worth, I don't see any like frame dropping or screen tearing or anything like that. Oh great, I'm committed to this save now. But we have, ooh, that's interesting. We have a filter that mostly colorizes this, uh, probably in the same way that original Game Boy games were colorized. Oh, there we go. I can actually move around. Go to area two. Um, that is to say, these colors don't correspond with anything that the game is actually telling us about. Uh, it's just making a best cut, a best guess based off of the specific shade of gray um, but otherwise oh, there's another one but otherwise this is probably what we'd expect this screen to look like if we could see that original screen a little bit better actually let's go back there just so we have the comparison oh. so we also have that red one which is probably where I'd leave it I like that uh, green one I guess a little bit original Game Boy reminiscent, blue, purple. No, that's the original Game Boy one, excuse me. And then I guess it's appropriate that we have a uh, Ava themed color scheme, almost. We'll just disregard that blue and pretend it's orange. And then this horrifying vaporwave color scheme with uh, cyan and purple, but yeah, that's it. Not too much. It's kind of hard to get to that thing. It's really recessed. But I guess they didn't want you accidentally hitting it while you're trying to play your Wonder Swan. So yeah, neat console, neat backlight mod. Um, I really wish I knew more about this stuff. I really shouldn't have put that there because of where I keep grabbing this thing. But. Oops, that's not what I wanted to pull out. 
Um, I don't know. I'll have to see if I can get a Flash Master or something. Try and play out some ROM hacks. Oh, that's interesting. So it looks like this backlight kit doesn't have any memory. So it's going to reset to this green color palette every single time. I hadn't considered that. Um, but yeah, green, if we set it to blue, and then power cycle. Oh, it's blue. I wonder why it was doing that then. Never mind. It does re recall settings. I didn't think it would. I don't know why it reset to green both those times. But hey, there you go. And one more thing just for good measure. If you pull the card out, if you if you treat this like a Game Boy, whereas a Game Boy will power on with no game in it, you just get that Game Boy screen. Whereas with a game, the Game Boy displays a slightly different screen and then actually boots the game. A Wonder Swan. No game. Doesn't do much. Like, you might look at this and think it's broken. No, it's it's not. The Wonder Swan is working perfectly fine. There's just needs a game to boot. Ta-da! I think the color ones are even worse at that. Like, if we pop this in there. Like, it just doesn't do anything. Nothing. Whereas if we put a game in, comes right up. So, just to keep in mind if you're sitting there thinking you want to refurb these things. I can't imagine the demand is good enough to do that, but... Yeah, pretty neat. Might be worth going with the color model though, just because you can reshell these uh, and the screen itself is a little bit bigger. But, oh, and, you know, more games. But if you have the original Wonder Swan, and probably because they're a lot cheaper, hey, it works. I certainly don't mind it. And it's working with all of my batteries, which is more than can be said about some of the Game Boy backlights that I've uh, played around with. So yeah, sorry, I don't have any uh, like artificial benchmarks to throw at this thing. I don't even have any games I can sit here and play and say, oh yeah, this is so much better. I can look at it and go, oh yeah, this is so much better, but I can't really prove it aside from booting this game up and running through the same few title sequences because I have no idea what's going on. I'll have to sit here with Google Translate and try and translate most of these menus. This is almost definitely new game and continue, um, but... I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what all that story that I just skipped past was. I don't know what those two options are. That's probably exit. I have no idea what that is. I don't know where I just went. I don't know what this person's talking to me about. So on and so forth. I see something on the floor. Let's go get it. Also, Wonder Swans have really shitty D-pads compared to Game Boys. So there's that. It's usable, but, oops, that's not what I wanted. What's that? So there's two floors for each area. Oh boy, I got another item. I'm going to go to bed, but not at 10 a.m. Sound still works as normal. A little headphone dongle we can get for these things. I think most people end up making them out of HDMI ports though because that cutout happens to fit an HDMI port um, and the pin pitch is a multiple of what HDMI uses so it's close enough. Not ideal. Neat game. I'll have to play it. Neat backlight mod. Uh, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to check out. Um, usually I even provide my own Game Boys, but they sent me... or consoles. This is clearly not a Game Boy. Um, but they even sent me the Wonder Swan to check out because I only had 
colors in my uh, inventory here, but huge shout out to them. I wouldn't have, uh, I certainly wouldn't have done this video if they didn't send it to me. I'm not a big Wonder Swan guy, but I don't know, this, this makes me want to check it out, see if there's anything good. So I, I guess I'm going to look into flashcards for these things because Good lord, tracking down the few games that are in English. I have done research on this. Um, the few games that are in English are horrendously overpriced because everyone else had the same idea. Hey, this is a neat console. Let's see what games there are. And then they bought up all the games that you can actually play without having to translate. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to look into a flashcard or something. See if there's some way I can play these things. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a flash master for these things. Hopefully it's in stock somewhere. Uh, an original one. I don't want to deal with any clones. But, yeah, that's pretty nice. And I like that the lens fits pretty well. Usually with stuff that complicated of a cutout, you know, it's not just a square. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap here and there, but way better than a lot of the, the Game Boy Advance ones. Anyway, that's all I've got. I will go ahead and shoot a link in the description if you want to check this out. Uh, Retro Game Repair Shop has them. They're not too, um, not, not too bad when it comes to price, especially if you've already got a Wonder Swan and are looking at buying any games for the freaking thing. Holy crap. Aside from like the random shovelware, games start at like 80 bucks. Like I said, they're not that common, and all of the playable, like, in English, or at least not in Japanese games, are uh, a little bit up there. Uh, and the fact that this was only released in Japan certainly does not help things, because now you got to import everything, or pay someone who already imported it, yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for sticking with me and letting me ramble. This video could have been at least 15 minutes shorter, but... Who I am as a person prevented that. Um, that's all I've got. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.